I'll be showing 12 new features in Microsoft Teams. This includes a bunch of chat improvements, meeting updates, sign language view, and a whole lot more. So let's get started. The first new feature is the long time request to be able to delete a chat. I'm gonna to switch to chat here in Teams, and I'm gonna to switch to my Alex Wilbur chat. Now, I don't really wanna hear from Alex anymore, and I'm just gonna to go to the three dot menu, and I will go down and click delete chat. I get a little prompt that says, this is gonna permanently delete the chat for me, but not for Alex. So it goes out of my space, but he still thinks that we're chatting. I'll hit delete, and now it's cleared out. The second new feature is the ability to address a chat to a group. So I'm gonna click new chat here, and at the top, I'm gonna to start typing in Contoso. This is a group, it could be a distribution list or a security group as well, but I've got Contoso eighth grade students, this is my class here. Now historically, I'd have to type out each one, now when I click this, it expands that group automatically to all those different people. So now I can just type a chat to that entire group really easily. The third new feature lets you quickly add people to an existing chat. So I have this chat here that I started with that class. I wanna add Alex. So down at the bottom, I'm just gonna click here and type the at symbol. And there's an option, add someone to the chat. So I'll click this and I'm just gonna type in Alex Wilbur. It finds him, I hit add. And now you can see that Alex at the top has been added right to the chat directly. This is just a little bit of a time saver to easily add someone into your chat. The fourth new feature is using AI to suggest who you might wanna chat with next. So if I click right here and do new chat, Teams already knows who I've been chatting with a bit and it suggests these people right here. So here's Ella, I wanna start a chat with her. Hey there. The fifth new feature lets you add any emoji type to your messages in Teams, whether it's a post or a chat. So I've got this big important TPS status meeting. I wanna give the perfect reaction. So when you hover now, there's this little smiley face with a plus. If I click this, I have all these different options. And you can click and scroll around and see all of the different things you have to choose from, all sorts of fun ones. You can also use the search at the top. So in this case, I'm gonna search for 100 because I'm in 100% agreement. This big TPS report status meeting, and it's added here, is gonna be 100% awesome. The sixth new feature is a dramatically improved meeting toolbar in Teams meetings. I'm gonna go launch a Teams meeting right here. Now, if you look across the top, you're gonna to see a new set of buttons and a little bit more easy and clear layout. First off, we've moved the raise hand button outside of reactions. So when you click reactions, you can react, but just to raise hand, it's right here. You'll also see the view switcher menu move from over on the left to right here. So when I click this, I have all my different view options in together mode and the other types of views. The apps button has a slightly different icon. It's a plus now, so when you wanna add apps to your meetings, you click that. But the biggest update is the three dot menu and more. Instead of having a big giant list, a lot of these settings have been consolidated. So the meeting settings themselves right here, device settings, call health, meeting options, and accessibility, I'll show that in just a moment. Things like record and transcribe are pulled out directly, so start recording or start transcription, and a few other options like language and speech, so turning on live captions or turning on speaker coach. So really easy to parse that menu compared to what it was in the past, which is a very long list of things. The seventh new feature is a long time request, which is letting breakout rooms be co-managed. That means as an organizer, I can have other people help me manage the different breakout rooms. It's been a long time request for big meetings, also for education. The first step is make sure that you have the people you want to be co-managers have presenter rights. Now, I just got a small meeting here, but I wanna have both Alex and Ella be presenters so they can manage the breakout rooms along with me. So hit the three dot menu and say, make a presenter, hit change. And then for Ella, three dot menu, make a presenter and hit change. Now all three of us have presenter rights. For the next step, go up to the top and click rooms, which is the breakout rooms icon. We're gonna just have two different rooms and we'll leave it on automatically and I will click create rooms at the bottom. It's creating the rooms. Now the two rooms have been created here and now we're gonna add the co-manage permissions for these two presenters. So hit the settings gear here and now there's a assign presenters to manage rooms, a new switch. Turn that on and then you drop this down and search for presenters. So drop this, there's Ella, I'll drop that and I'm gonna add Alex. So both Alex and Ella can manage rooms now. I'm gonna click save. Now I'll go back and hit settings back. And now what I'm gonna do is sign in as Ella and show how she can do things like assign participants and other breakout rooms options. So let's switch over to Ella. Now I'm signed in as Ella and you can see that I have the rooms button right here for breakout rooms. 
I can click this and because I have managed permissions, I can do all the things with breakout rooms. I can assign participants, I can delete them, I can do settings here, I can add more. So all the same things that a normal breakout room organizer would be able to do, I can do now because I have permissions as a co-manager. The eighth new feature are groupings of accessibility settings and making them really accessible in a meeting. So if I go to the three dot menu here, you're gonna see settings and I can choose accessibility right here. This opens up the new accessibility panel. You can have sign language, and I'll show that in just a minute, but you can also have captions and say, always show captions in my meetings. So instead of having to turn it on every time, I'm gonna turn this on right here. And in this case, I can say, you know what? It's typically we have English meetings. I'm gonna save for future meetings and I'll hit confirm. Now, every single time that I go into my meeting, I'll have captions along the bottom. You can see right here that they're just starting up because I enabled it. And if I wanna turn them off, I can go to the three dot menu here and go to language and speech and say, turn live captions off. So I can turn them off in a given meeting, but in general, it's always gonna start the meeting here because I said, always show captions in my live meetings. Now we're gonna have future accessibility settings showing up here as well. So stay tuned and you'll see more of those. The ninth new feature is a new sign language integration with Teams meetings. This has been a long time top request. This allows you to have sign language folks prioritized on your screen in particular. In this case, I've got a sign language option. I'm gonna turn this on so I prioritize specific people in my screen. Now I can manage who those are. So if I click manage signers, I'm gonna add Mike Thulfson. Now I'm not a sign language expert, but I'm just gonna demonstrate how this works. I will choose this person here, and now he is a signer. What this means is when Mike Thalfson is showing his video, it'll get prioritized just personally for me if I need a sign language signer. I'll click save and we'll close this. Now you'll see there's a little hand right here and that prioritizes the sign language person. I can remove as a signer right there. If I click this, it'll make him not prioritize, meaning me, but we'll leave that for now. So that means whenever Mike shows his video, it's gonna prioritize him as a sign language interpreter. Now I'm showing myself in the sign language position. You can see that the screen is much bigger in the upper right. And again, there's this little hand waving here that indicates this is the prioritized sign language person. So this is something that you can have just showing for the person who wants it. Because in this case, Ella said that Mike is the prioritized sign language interpreter. And so here he is now, meaning me, and I'm in this very prioritized spot. So even if there are other people showing underneath other videos, there'll be a much bigger spot just for me. One more example for sign language view. In this case, I'm still Ella and Mike is the prioritized sign language person. Another place to switch is up in the view switcher. So I've turned it off, but right now if I go to view and I choose sign language, watch what happens. Choose that. And now my screen is much more prioritized and this is just for Ella. So we've built it into the view switcher so you can easily switch back and forth between sign language or not. The 10th new feature is poll improvements. I'm gonna go into the top here and click plus to add an app. I'll search for polls and we'll add this. Now polls are the same thing as Microsoft Forms, just been renamed, so I'll click add. Now the new feature specifically is down at the bottom, you can see launch instant poll. So I can do a little check versus an X, a thumbs up or down or a heart. So if I just click here on the thumbs up and down, it immediately launches this poll. I didn't even have to go and target it or give details. So now I say, yeah, there's a thumbs up, one response, and there's a couple more responses. So really easy to just click and launch one of these instant polls right below. The 11th new feature supports multiple questions in your polls. So I'm gonna to go to the upper right here and choose new poll. Here's a set of questions and I'm gonna choose this multiple choice question. And I might fill this out, but what's nice is I can add another question. Uh, how are you feeling today? That's a good one. And I can even add a third question. And this time I'll choose word cloud. Now I can launch this poll and it'll be three different questions. So I'll click launch now. Here's the poll, my first question, I'll choose option one, go to the next one. How am I feeling today? I'm feeling great. And the third question, what is the word of the day? Fantastical, and I will click submit. And I can even see the responses of all three questions. So I can navigate through and I can see all these different responses. So it's great to have that multi-choice question option. The 12th new feature is the ability to add an image into your multiple choice question poll. I'm gonna go back up here again and choose new poll. And now I'll choose multiple choice. You can see there's this new option for image here. So I'm gonna click on image. I'll upload my image. 
Look at that, a TPS report. So I can ask my question and fill out the options. So I filled out my options and I can launch the poll. And there it is, a picture of, we know this is a TPS report cover sheet. So I'm gonna choose this and submit. And there we are. If you wanna keep up with all the latest Microsoft updates and tips and tricks, subscribe to my channel and then just ring the bell so you get all the latest videos that I post.